Hi guys, so welcome to week 5 tutorial psychometry chart part 2. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to design HVAC system using the psychometry chart. So last week, or if you if I'm referring to the week 4 psychometry chart tutorial part 1, we just touch here a little bit here and there on how to uh, get some data from the psychometry chart and the rest of them are just a calculation uh, for uh, cooling uh, cooling capacity, humidity, uh, relative humidity, uh, so on and so forth using the uh, equations. So today we are going to use the psychometry charts as well as a few other uh, uh, tables to assist us on how to design a HVS system using the psychometry chart. <laughs> I'm repeating myself. Okay. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me uh, uh, with the uh, online uh, class. I hope you have, um, uh, I hope you have enjoyed your stay at home or wherever you are right now. Um, be strong, and we can do this together. So let's go and see times page where to get our tutorial. Hi guys. So this is our times page for air conditioning and refrigeration engineering. Let us scroll down straight ahead to the tutorial and answers week five yeah so this is your week five so you can open them and use this for your reference and i have also given you the answers uh, for you to um, complete this tutorial five okay so open it in another tab or open it in other apps that you are familiar and comfortable with and let's do this together Right, as usual, I will use my PDF expert annotation file to discuss this tutorial file with you. Alright, boys and girls, so you are now looking at our tutorial 5, and then I am looking at question 1. Let's read together. In an air conditioning system, air flows at 2 kg per second enters the cooling coil. What are the parameters? 25 degrees Celsius and 50% RH. Now, here we are using the SI unit. As you can see here, our mass flow rate uh, is um, 2 kg per second. Right? And you are given state 1 with 2 points. Or you can have a look here, T1, uh, phi 1 or our relative humidity and also the mass flow rate of air is 2 kg per second, 50%. And 25 degrees Celsius so we can find and use our psychometry chart using these data now what are the states two the states two uh, the states two uh, are uh, the air leave the cooling coil at 11 degrees Celsius so this is our t2 11 degrees Celsius and percent RH is at 90% we have an apparatus dew point of the cooling coil and this is our apparatus uh, device where it brings the temperature even lower by forcing the air to reach saturation point right by reaching saturation point we can reduce the uh, temperature uh, uh, indefinitely okay so what is the temperature for dew point of this uh, apparatus is 7 degrees celsius now what are we going to find so let's clear this all out. What we need to find A. Required cooling capacity of the coil. B. The sensible heat factor for the process. And lastly, the bypass factor of the cooling coil. Assuming the barometric pressure to be 1 atmospheric pressure, and thus we can use our psychometric chart, assume the condensate water to leave coil at this. HW or enthalpy for water is 29.26 kJ per kilogram if we don't give this uh, hw to you guys therefore what you need to do is go to our uh, table and you can find at 7 degrees celsius what is the enthalpy for water or fluid hf or hw right so you will know what is the enthalpy of water or fluid at this temperature okay so we give you hw here 29.26 kilogram kilojoule per kilogram therefore you don't have to find it using the um psychometry uh, chart or using the table okay 
Now let's scroll down. A, the cooling capacity or cooling coil is given by QC, right? Equals to MA times H1 minus H2. This QC is not a capital Q and therefore it is not the unit of... Anybody can tell me? A capital Q is a total heat transfer. A smaller Q is a considered of heat flux that move through a unit of area. So if we are concerned about the area of this space that the fluid move to, then we can use Q. But in the uh, simplicity of engineering, we can simplify the equation even further by using small q so therefore we don't have to study the total heat transfer we assume as they are the same right so here is uh, equation is given by m a h1 minus h2 so this one refers to the mass of air that move through space that is have two enthalpy uh, difference h1 as state 1 h2 as state 2 and this is a vector equation right that tells that this mass of air have energy difference and therefore it has magnitude and direction the second part of this equation talks about water okay okay so the blue pen indicates the energy that move between two spaces however this part talks about the water energy that involve water that move in and out through the system although they don't exchange uh, mass but they exchange energy in terms of heat all right that's why we can combine them together in one equation so as you can see the one that have or entitled with uh, energy enthalpy is bigger than the one that involved in water and you can see the answer is in positive value that means energy is taken from the system into the cooling coil so qc is not talking about the heat that is removed from the box per se but it talks about the energy that the cooling coil absorb so we call this as cooling capacity of the cooling coil okay so that's why the answer is in positive so what you need to do is technically just put in all the numbers we have our uh, mass already um, what else we have our enthalpy where you get this enthalpy from the psychometry chart so i'm not going to go to the psychometry chart and find them for you what you're going to do is use this data and find them yourself now here for the water we use ma or mass of air or mass of dry air why don't we use mass of water that move through the cooling coil now again this context doesn't care about the uh, heat flux uh, or the movement of water inside the cooling coil called the conservation of mass and conservation of energy one that is promoted by Albert Einstein okay where energy and mass they are practically the same so we assume that the mass of air moved through this system is the same amount of energy that is transferred through the cooling coil and therefore the mass of air can be assumed and approximated as the mass of energy that moves from the cube here this box to the cooling coil all right so this is why ma is still used even though this section is for water and it does 2 kg per second and omega 1 and omega 2 you can find it from the psychometry chart right and hw you can find it from the table or in this question we give to you the answer is 41.05 kilowatts okay now what's next b sensible heat and transfer rate qs equals to mahz minus 2 uh, and ql is mahz h1 minus hz now 
this equation is inside our uh, notes in the appendix so you go to appendix of our week 5 psychometry chart part 2 lecture note and you can find the sen uh, sensible uh, heat transfer rate equation there right how do you find sensible heat uh, transfer rate or sensible heat factor uh, we use the equation qs over qs or plus ql or qs plus you can also use this as q i think it's a t stand for total because qt is qs plus ql or you can also use the protector uh, function on the psychometry chart so i'm just approximating the size of the psychometry chart this the line that makes the shf is considered parallel with the line that is made on the psychometry chart okay but however in this case we use the equations now the thing is how do we get to this h set equals to 43.5 as you can see here also is 43.5 how do you find hz tricky to find hz uh, or sometimes the textbook will use hx it doesn't matter what does these symbols means it is the um, uh, transition between ql to qs what is ql ql is latent heat transfer what is latent heat transfer latent heat transfer is a energy transfer that does not involve in any water element right it is just a pure increment of temperature by itself sensible heat transfer means the energy is increased by adding humidification when we add humidification we will find that the energy can be increased even further at a very drastic rate the combination of QS and QL is called the sensible heat heating factor while we use both of QL and QS in order for us to increase the energy inside the system now we have to go to our psychometric chart so on the psychometric chart that I have here I've already downloaded it in my PDF expert app so you can download on your own we need to use some gymnastic okay First of all, you need to find that you are looking at the SI unit, psychometric chart. This one, I don't think so. Right? This one is uh, Fahrenheit, yes. So we have to look down here. Okay? So you are looking at our SI unit, psychometric chart. First of all, you need to know what is our state. Okay? So first state is T1. Okay, so let, give me a moment to open in my notes all right so t1 is 25 degrees celsius so increase i'm going to increase my segmentary chart i'm going to take my red ink i'm going to x on 25 right the next part i'm going to x is the um, the relative humidity at 50 percent rh so i'm going to go up like that until you reach 50% RH right 50% RH then I'm gonna X that now my state 2 is 11 per, uh, degrees Celsius this is my 11 degrees Celsius and my percent is 90% right 90% relative humidity so I'm gonna increase to 90% So this is my 90% relative humidity cross point. What I'm going to do next is to make a line. This is called the condition line, right? Condition line between the uh, point 1 and point 2. Now, since we don't have what is the angle between QL and QS, so we can approximate this angle. I'm going to use a blue uh, ink here as a straight line so we are going to have a cooling factor that means we are going to reduce first the heating point or cooling point downwards so you can see here 
my blue ink sorry move this way right that's number one and this will be our QS and then another line down here and this will be our QL QS is the sensible heat which is the increment uh, by adding uh, humidity ratio or humidity that's why it goes up and down while the QL is a straight line or horizontal line whereby the in the temperature is decreased or increased indefinitely without the adding water content now on our note it says HX is 43.5 right now there must be some uh, a few data that is not really there in the question so what I'm going to talk about is the HX or HZ where is our HX and HZ it's here HZ or HX at this point okay so that point if I can extend to the enthalpy line just below that dotted line there so be patient with me as best as you can I'm not going I don't have my ruler here and as you can see the enthalpy line is over here let's just change this color to green so here's 40 therefore this is 41 42 43 44 our note says our hx is at 43.5 but our psychometric chart here that i'm using maybe our hx is at 44.5 there is increment of one enthalpy now i will have some range in the exam uh, script so maybe when we are using our psychometry chart it will not be very perfect for each and every one of you so i will have a range my hx will be one of these um, hx and h or hz so we can use one of these points so i'm going to use 44.5 here but i'm going to compare with the one with the um uh, the notes here one with the notes so therefore our hx is or hz is is 44.5 kilojoule over kilogram all right so that is why if i go back to my solution my one will be green right 44.5 now let's bear with me if you're going to use 43.5 our results will be 28 point uh 28.6 uh, if you use the one that we find in our psychometric chart this will be let me increase the point here 30 kilowatt right and then for ql the answer is uh, let's see 13.2 kilowatt but if you use our results just now the number will be 11 kilowatt okay 11 kilowatt so when you plug this into our um shf uh, calculation uh, if you use a uh, tutorial you'll get the answer will be 0 0.68 but if you use our answer or the one that we choose from the, the one that i choose from the segment chart the answer it will be 731 now most probably we have some more data that we should have here however for the lack of data and for the benefit of doubt for you guys we will use 0 0.73 or 0 0.68 so now i'm going to use 0 0.73 this is our shf i would like to visit back our psychometric chart All right therefore our sensible heat factor that means this line the condition line will make shf 0 0.73 and this line should be parallel to this where is our 0 0.73 let me reduce this size should be somewhere around here okay it will not be a perfect line now therefore this line and this condition line will be parallel Oi, that's a very bad handwriting right be parallel then your answer is correct based on your calculation so i'm going to stick with my own answer 
0.73 will be my SHF. Okay, now let's go to the next question. Bypass factor. Bypass factor is very easy. It is given by this equation. Right? What you need to do is you should have T1 and T2, and our dew point is uh, 7 degrees Celsius. So it's very easy. 0 0.222 will be our bypass factor. So this is for question number one. Now, let's go for question number two. A cooling tower is used for cooling the condenser water of a refrigerating system. Having heat rejection rate is at uh, 100 kilowatt. In the cooling tower, air enters at 35 degrees C at due uh, dry bulb temperature and 24 degrees uh, C at wet bulb temperature. So you are given two points. So from these two points, you can find the data from our psychometric chart. So you leave the cooling tower at dry bulb temperature 26 degrees Celsius and relative humidity 95%. Right? So energy is increased or temperature is increased while the humidity is also increased because this is a cooling tower. Heat is absorbed into the system so that we can absorb heat from the refrigerant and the refrigerant will return to our rooms or our, our, our spaces where it is rejected to the atmosphere at the cooling tower. Now, what are the required flow rate of air at the inlet to the cooling tower in meter cube per second? This is our volumetric flow rate. What is the amount of makeup water to be supplied? That means, what is the volumetric flow rate that is required for air to move into the inlet of the cooling tower? And number two, how much water do we have to put in back? Because as the water evaporates, as it absorbs or release heat, so the water content in the cooling tower will be deplete and we need to replace that water in order for us to have a similar capacity throughout the day as the uh, air con system runs right so the temperature of makeup water is at 30 degrees uh, celsius that means the water that is uh, supplied back into the cooling system will have temperature at 30 degrees celsius or room temperature at our country so what is at which enthalpy hw uh, so uh, sorry the hw is given as 124 kilojoule per kilogram so again this is given so you don't have to find using the table right next is use the barometric pressure to be one atmospheric pressure that means we can use our psychometric chart let me increase my, my point a uh, pen and let's go to this question so this is a very quick one Again, energy balance, QC, QH, as you can see, it doesn't matter. The cooling load or heating load of a system in HVAC system is just a perspective point of view. So we are going to stick to QC. If it's a positive value, that means the cooling that is supplied to the uh, space back, uh, back to the space is 100 kilowatt, right? If not, then uh, it will be a, a hit heat added or reja uh, heat reject uh, by or from the system okay so the question is what is our um volumetric flow rate we will use this mass energy equation and you will see that qc is ma h2 minus h1 and minus the one for the water section all right so ma is unknown because we don't know how much water is supplied because we don't know how much volumetric flow rate is supplied so we can put whatever data we have the one that we have in excess here or the one that we have from the question is the qc itself 100 kilowatt so we use it as 100 uh, 100 100 kilowatt positive because heat is added from the system to the to the cooling tower so we are talking about the heat that is moved to the cooling tower and we get the answer ma is 18 point nine seven kilogram per second so we need to change this into volumetric flow rate as we know ma is equals to volumetric flow rate but by specific volume ma is dot v dot over specific volume this is specific volume All right so rearrange the equation you will get this one so our volumetric flow rate will be 16.94 meter cube per second done b what is the amount of makeup water required so mw is the water section without the hw because we are not talking about heat or enthalpy or energy we just mainly talk about mass of water 
so we put in all the needed answer uh, uh, value since we have ma already we have our uh, enthalpies already the answer will be 11 uh, 0 0.1136 kilogram per second all the data can be found either from the table or from the psycho psychrometric chart right in this case it is found solely from the psychrometric chart right let's go to question three moist air at 60 degrees fahrenheit dry bulb and 20 percent relative humidity enters a heater and a humidifier at a rate of 1600 cubic feet per minute now is a chance for you to uh, uh, get your skill at uh, english unit Heating of the air is followed by adiabatic humidification, so it leaves at 111, sorry, 115 Fahrenheit. Uh, relative humidity at 30 degrees, uh, 30 percent. Saturated water vapor is at 212 Fahrenheit, which is injected in the system there, which one that I circled just now. Determine the required heat transfer rate and mass flow rate of the water vapor. Okay, so this is our system. All right, state one enters the heating medium and then it enters the humidifier and exit at state 2 all right so you can find all this data point in our uh, psychometric chart now take a look at our psychometric chart it's a bit different the sensible heat is slanted a bit just now that we have encountered it is straight up line right so we don't have this data in our question just now we have it now it is a bit slanted now this slanted will make the similar parallel point I'm going to use a red point so this line right will be parallel to this point and this line will be parallel to this point so the degree that it made should be the same right so it is parallel all together so this degree if you know as you can see this one is also slanted right slanted so you can see that slanted uh, straight line is made by this angle right so from here you can find your hx or hz using this line somewhere around here okay if it's given to you that psychometry chart as well as this line please use your uh, power tractor please use your ruler and find these values okay so you have your hx there tada so what you need to do is just put into our equations qc is equal to ma hx minus h1 so where is the water section so we are not talking about the water yet we are talking about the heating medium section only which is this one right hx minus h1 since the heating medium does not involve in the addition of water as you can see it is technically a straight line for ql you see here heating medium no water added therefore it is ql ql is latent heat latent heat is increment of energy without the addition of water just temperature itself okay so that's why qc is equal to mahx minus h1 only so from there ma is equal to 7300 pound of uh, air divided by hour why we need to divide by hour because technically heat transfer rate in english unit is btu per hour we need to change from minute right cfm cubic feet per minute change to hour now then heat transfer Q rate is given as 89,425 British temperature unit per hour right so the mass flow rate is for water vapor is MV taken by the water section of the equation previously used which is not used in this section so put in all the value and you have 125 pound mass for vapor uh, per hour question 4 talks about the atmospheric air at 30 degrees Celsius 100 kilopascal has a dew point of 21.3 100 kilopascal there tells you that you should use a psychometric chart at one atmospheric pressure pressure 
not pleasure, pressure. Uh, so in uh, KPA is 100 or 101.32 or just 101. So it doesn't matter. It's just the same. Find the relative humidity, humidity ratio, and enthalpy of the mixture, mixture per mass of dry air. If atmospheric pressure is conditioned 20 degrees Celsius, 40% relative humidity, what is the mass water added or removed by the unit mass of dry air? Right. So TDP is 21.3 and uh, T that is uh, exit uh, or the atmospheric is 30 degrees Celsius. Now, you cannot use psychrometric chart for this one. What you need is the uh, table. So we are looking at 21.3 degrees C. So if I can go back to this table, so make sure you are looking at S, uh, in, uh, English unit, yeah, English unit. Uh, sorry, yeah, SI unit. Where is SI unit? Yes, 21.3. So that is tricky. 21.3 exists between these two lines. And therefore, you must do some interpolation to get your absolute pressure. Here is MPA. What you need to do is to change it to kilopascal. I don't want to do that. So you can do it yourself. So you will see that our PV is 2.548 kilopascal. PG is 4.25. At 30 degrees Celsius, let's change to a green pen. It is already there. 0 0.00. 425 megapascal change to kilopascal and you will get 4.25 kilopascal we need to locate t and p right so what you need to do is to use the pv and pg and you get your uh, relative humidity so relative humidity is done one number two is the humidity ratio so here we use the equation so now you might have get the idea if you use table mainly we will use theoretical equations if not then we use psychometric chart right so what you need to do is just to plug in all the values and you will get the humidity ratio kilogram per, per water vapor and kilogram of air next to find the enthalpy Enthalpy is given by, uh, if you, you go back to our notes, it's given by the equation, which is this one, right? So instead of using H, you can use CPA, CP should be given 1.005, and the rest are all here, and the answer is 71.71 kJ per kilogram of air. That is question number four. Very simple. Question number five talks about the 2000. 2000 cubic feet per minute of air move at 100 degrees Fahrenheit about temperature and 75 where about temperature and that is state 1 it is mixed with 1000 uh, cfm of air at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 50 degrees Fahrenheit where about and state 2 the process is adiabatic at steady flow rate and standard sea level pressure so you can use your psychometric chart this is a mixing condition mixing is maybe one two three right m1 m2 m3 so this is mixing and the process is adiabatic that means it's just purely mixing without any mechanical help such as turbine fan or stirring process therefore your ma3 is equals to ma1 plus ma2 to find ma1 it is already given to you the cubic cubic uh, uh, feet per minute is one uh, two thousand for m a sorry m a one is one thousand and m a two is two thousand so if so if you might uh, realize that there is a mistake on this slide where our two thousand cubic feet per minute is for state two while one thousand cubic feet per minute is for state one right so change it to ma because we need to find our ma3 so ma1 is given by this 45 42 pound of air over uh, hour and ma2 is 83 32 pound air per hour now using this equation let me write it down 
m and omega will make a vector equation so this is also an equation that you must know instead of m a it changed to m w or m omega to add the uh, vector equation x back to it mass and energy combined together and become force right so put in all the values that you have you will get your omega 3 this omega 3 you plot it into this uh, psychometry chart and this line the straight line right from the omega 3 will make the the third point inside this uh, psychometric chart and thus simply you find your enthalpy using this method right very simple there are also a method that use the distance that means you need to use a ruler and find the distance between 1 to 3 and also 3 to 1 the distance of 1 until 3 and the distance from 3 until 1 uh, until 2 but this in this case we just use the simple equation right and uh, pardon on the uh, error in these two places huh? right state one and state two have uh, the um, backwards uh, cubic feet or uh, volumetric flow rate okay finally question six although it's question five that is question six now consider a space of heating and design as shown in figure one this figure yeah the total space heating load is 500,000 BTU per hour and space design condition is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 degrees uh, 30 percent relative humidity that is our condition space right condition space outdoor air enters the preheat coil at 6 degrees Fahrenheit right so this is our condition space and this is our outdoor air that enters and it goes to the preheat coil first then you hit preheat coil right what else uh, essentially at zero percent rh where is heated to 60 degrees fahrenheit that means the air that goes into this uh, coil or this line is very dry very dry so uh very dry will be where is it maybe a place where it's very hot or the place that is very cold but very dry as well so technically this place is cold 6 degrees Fahrenheit and the percent RH is 0 right where is the place where it's cold and dry at the same time now you figure it out yourself uh, this air then mixed with return air so what does it mean this air is mixed with the return air so what does it mean as air enters this line to the preheat coil the air also is mixed from the return air right there is a mixing there very important it is also going to refer back to this mixing graph on the psychometric chart let's go back to the question the mixture is first heated of course and then humidified in a separate process to 100 degrees fahrenheit and 30 percent rh where this is it the heating coil and also the humidifier right saturated vapor at two pound per square inch of gas is used for humidification 25 percent of the supply air is outdoor air by mass that means this section will use 25 percent of outdoor air this whole cycle will use 25% of outdoor air OE right sketch the schematic process and compute the supply and volumetric flow rate the heat transfer in both coil the heat uh, the cooling uh, preheat coil and the heating coil and the steam flow rate in English and SI unit there's a lot of work here but there's a lot of work but what we need to do first is to find all this data right so as you can see we have one and a few more let's go one by one this one is t1 at six degrees celsius and the relative uh, percent rh is zero at t2 is 60 degrees fahrenheit and the percent rh is told to you guys as 30 percent right at state five where is state five there state five 
105 degrees Fahrenheit and the percent energy is 30% that means it goes through this line reach 5 and increase by the humidifier at a hundred and um, where is it again? 5 Fahrenheit and T6 after the condition space is 70 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and 30% RH why is that? because it goes from the condition space to 6 so we assume the uh, stage 6 is the same as the condition space there is no equipment here and therefore it is solely taken from the condition space uh, MA1 is 2 point, uh, 0 0.25 uh, MA CFM, right? Uh, what else? H5 is 41.5 BTU per LB or pound of dry air, right? Pound of dry air. So this enthalpy you can get from psychometry chart. And H6 is 22 BTU per pound per dry air, also from the psychometry chart. Now the answer. M A six, right? Q originally is equal to M A six times H five minus H six. Uh, this M A six is the one that comes from the condition space and into the section where you're going to mix. So the answer is two hundred and forty one pound of dry air over hour. Yeah, over hour. And next, MA is equals to MA6, but it times 25% because MA1, right? MA1 is MA6. You see, MA1 is MA6, where MA1 is 0 0.25 times the mass of air coming from 6. As I tell to you guys just now, 25% of supply air is by the outdoor air. So you have to times that and using this you can find it 6410 pound per air, pound air of uh, per hour now this section is where we use the distance as you can see that right ma2 divided by ma7 so ma2 here divided by ma7 right and also equals to ma1 divided by and A6 equals to 0 0.25 right 0 0.25 because the mixture of outdoor air is 0 0.25 okay now this will be the distance between 63 and 60 is 0 0.25 so if you go back so I'm not going to do this for you guys you try it yourself so this will be the psychometric chart the line between 6 right so 0 will be the cool place 6 will be the high place and somewhere will be 3 so this bar tells you the distance right tells you the distance the distance between 6 to 3 and 6 to 0 is 0 0.25 right 0 0.25 so figure it out so if 6 to 3 and 6 to 0 the distance is given by 0 0.25 how are you going to find the distance there so i can give you some uh some points 0 0.25 is also 25 over 100 that means the whole length 6 to 0 is 100 percent so 6 to 3 is 25 percent so from there use the ruler right so what is zero so zero is seven degrees fahrenheit right so this should be seven somewhere here and six six is given to you by 75 sorry 70 degrees fahrenheit right so these points are given to you so from here let me change to the other color this point to this point you will know what is the distance already by these two points right so 25 percent for state 3 can be easily calculated uh, used there uh, you can uh, easily measure by the ruler all right from that t3 you will pinpoint your t3 at 67.5 degrees fahrenheit that is how you find your distance so work it out try it yourself 
and see if you can find it on your own all right so we've sort of uh answer the supply volumetric flow rate by the m a1 right m a1 and then we need to do the uh, preheat coil so preheat coil and heating coil is given by this equation preheat coil is ma1 cpt1 minus t2 and heating coil is ma3 there's no cp h4 minus h3 the reason is the air that comes into the preheat coil is coming from outdoor air so if it coming from outdoor air is atmospheric air so atmospheric air has its own cp but for heating coil it is after adding the one that comes from state 7 and state 6 right 6 to 7 and into the system back back to the system so you cannot use cp anymore so you can use and rely solely on the ma3 ma1 and ma3 is already uh, calculated right so as you can see here you can also find the distance between 3 7 and 2 3 which is also 0 0.25 why is it the same because this line from 6 to 7 it is the same line so we can assume that 6 and 7 is pretty much the same line okay so find this 2 3 and 7 from this psychometric chart so you can sketch it and find the, the the place where you uh, plus this I think we have one question similar on the uh, uh, in the lecture note right so let's go straight to the answer free call is 92,304 BT per hour but for the heating call is 215,384 uh, BT per, per hour all right and next we need to find the steam flow rate so that means the humidification the mass so it is ma3 omega 5 omega 4 so where is this 5 and 4 is here right between this section the humidifier right that mv or mw so simply use the equation plug in all the values and reach at 2871 pound of water per hour so i would like you guys to do question six on your own plot this graph uh use the notes i think the appendix i think uh, to help you guys to solve this question okay okay so there are some challenges for you to do inside this tutorial okay tutorial uh, five, uh week five and question six is i'm going to leave it some apart to you as we have discussed just now Good luck. Uh, I hope I can see you in the meeting using Microsoft Team. Um, uh, ask me any question if you have uh, using Telegram. If you do, uh, also maybe you can ask in Microsoft Team chats, uh, chat place. Okay. All right. So I wish you good luck. Stay safe. And um, what else? Uh, be safe, I guess. Okay. Bye.